being in Jamaica for you? <laughs> no. <laughs> with with no <laughs> fancy <laughs> with no fancy Jamaican drinks. <laughs> yeah, well, and yeah, let's go find some Jamaican smiles, buddy. Yeah, Fuck. a lot more. All, work. Over that. <laughs> All right, you have to be working today, obviously. Yeah, I'm at the office. Nothing coming in. Uh, apparently, there's uh, a few things coming in today. Somebody came and gave me three thousand dollars. That was nice. Three thousand dollars for what? For a roofing job that we finished. Oh, oh, sweet. Yeah, it's not every morning you wake up and count three thousand dollars in cash. Yeah, no, it's a good, good deal. It was a good morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, well, what I'll do is I'll touch base with you later. Then, or you can touch base with me later. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can call you around five o'clock. All right, have a good day. Okay, my brother. Take care. Bye. What I wanted to talk about was space. So. We're listening to the Mars Volta, um, The Widow, and uh, I saw this band. They opened up for uh, System of a Down a few years ago, and I saw them. It was pretty good. What I wanted to talk about was space and, uh, you know, my rules of not editing the Adam Josh Oral Brog prohibit me from editing out that... Uh, telephone conversation, and it, believe me, that was not scripted. Although Rick talks like somebody's recording him all the time, but maybe that's from just being a musician all his life, I don't know. Plus he's driving around talking on speakers, so I'm sort of his entertainment coming out of his uh, headset. He's got, it's not a headset, but it comes out of his speakers. <clears throat> Rick Legacy from uh, the Butterface Band and Panic, the last band I drummed in. Yeah, he's building a new house, and uh, I'm apparently a good friend to have when it comes to small projects, because the Swiss Army knife of businesses that we run uh, and the general let's get her done attitude that I have uh, helps people. And uh, I, I look at a friend who needs something, and I think to myself, I can help him. If I'm busy, then I'm busy, but if I'm not busy, I don't tell people that I'm busy. Oh, I'm so busy. No, I can do it. Sure, let's do it. <clears throat> anyway, I want to talk about space. Let's talk about space. Uh, I have one of my old brogs up here, Helium 3 Mining the Moon, and there's been a lot of developments in the whole leaking information on technology in space. I just watched... Um, I just watched the president uh, addressing the Atlantis crew on the ISS. You can go on YouTube and type in uh, NASA ISS and it comes up one of the first videos from two days ago or type in president addressing ISS. And he's saying, you know, yes, this is one of the last shuttle missions, but we're leaving one of the American flags there that was from the, one of the first missions to the ISS and we're going to sort of play capture the flag with the commercial sector and for those of you who know anything about this basically what he's he's saying is that they're opening up the commercial sector to space privatizing space flight and if you've been following any of my blogs over the years you'd already know that because I talk, I've talked about years ago when Richard Branson was uh, unveiling his uh, privatized space flight Virgin Intergalactic Virgin Galactic I think it's called Sp he's privatizing space flight and you know for the right amount of money you can go and take a trip I guess now to the ISS and he also talks about in the video uh, that the next step would be interplanetary travel and I'm quoting now putting humans on Mars so all this hoopla and uh, crazy things that you think I'm talking about on my last few brogs. Um, how does life on other planets affect you and uh, helium-3 mining the moon, the one that I'm, I have up here. 
you know, the President of the United States is talking about it, NASA astronauts are talking about it, all the, all the people who are being interviewed are talking about, yeah, well, the next step is we're going to be going to Mars and the moon again. And uh, I've, on Helium-3 mining the moon, I have uh, some cool new videos. What I, something that I thought was pretty cool was I found a video by, in, from 1989. I didn't realize it was that old. But it's by Bill Cooper, and he's discussing, Bill Cooper's now uh, dead, shot by the police outside his house. There's an official story, and there's whatever really happened. I wasn't there, so I don't know. But uh, Bill Cooper, who's dead now, going on for a while about the secret space program, uh, mining bases on the moon, and, um, and uh, human population on Mars. And I think for anybody who's still sort of um, in the in the type of mentality where oh it's impossible to have life on Mars or life on the moon or humans on the moon or humans on Mars already it's impossible for those type of people I mean those same people will accept and understand that technology is usually on average 30 years behind what's uh, publicly available you know in the R&D departments and the skunk works department of Lockheed and Mark Martin, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, and all that, people can admit that, yeah, of course, they have advanced technology. You can look up what's being termed right now a breakaway civilization of people uh, with unlimited black funding and off-the-books off the books funding with high technological advancements that have gotten off of this planet years ago, probably in the 60s or even earlier, and are just living that high technological technologically advanced lifestyle and they're estimating about 10,000 years ahead of the population of on average of Earth right now. So that interview by Bill Cooper is pretty sweet and uh, I have one there uh, by Alex Collier that I was watching as I wrote it. Uh, there's some other uh, additions at the bottom and I recommend that you uh, look at Helium-3 mining the moon. Of course, now they're admitting, as I updated on uh, the 7th of this month, uh, they're admitting in The Ecologist of plans that are already underway to strip mine the moon for Helium-3. And this is something that John Lear, William Cooper, were talking about in 1989. I wish that this was a joke. I wish I was exaggerating. I was exaggerating. I was underestimating it when I thought, well, I've heard John Lear, the son of William Lear, the founder of the Jet and Airline, the creator of the Jet and Airline. I heard him talk about mining bases on the moon two years ago, and I thought, that's far-fetched. But, you know, my, my stance is I want truth. I don't care if it hurts. I want, I side with the truth 100% of the time. Sometimes it hurts. Anyway, I found that I found that out and got turned on to this sort of information two years ago. Now, watching Bill Cooper talk about it in 1989, to me that was I mean I'm, I was eight years old. That floors me. Anyway, so the ecologist plans to strip mine the moon. You can go to the ecologist and check this out right now. It may not be long before we start mining the moon for its resources, particularly helium three. And uh, you can take a look for that yourself. Here's the screenshot. It's the ecologist. And you can look all, at all that yourself. So, my point is, you know, there's water. They admit that there's water on the moon. And water is made of up of uh, hydrogen and oxygen, right? And... And there's water on Mars as well. So you can't have water without air, without oxygen. So I would counter that there's breathable atmosphere on the moon and Mars. So that's the Adam Josh Roll Broad. Tell your friends to get a job. Check out Helium 3 Mining the Moon. And hey, it's real. It's real.